looking for me. You're Bassett, aren't you? Suppose I am. I know all about you. You're going to work for us, aren't you? Mother says you're a handyman and spare time gardener and you used to work for Uncle Oscar and you hurt your leg in the wall. Can I come in? That's right. Come in. I say, what's about, Mother? Come in, then, come in. I'm Paul. How'd you do? I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, Master Paul. So you want to know what a Batman is, eh? All right, I'll tell you now. A Batman is an army officer's personal servant. At one time during the war, I was your Uncle Oscar's Batman. And do you know I couldn't wish to work for a finer man? But you seem to know all about me anyway. It's what I heard Mother telling Nanny. She said she only prayed to heaven you turned out all right. I think it's smashing having someone new. What's that? Is it you? That is. Did you win? I did. I say, smashing. He was all heart, that little horse. Inky Boy was his name. Boy Ink spot out a champion. I love that little horse. Did you ever win the derby? <laughs> Me? No, no, never on your life. I was just a lad. What you might call a stable boy. I didn't get a chance to ride in a race as often as all that anyway. But I had a master fine time when I did, I can tell you. I used to have trouble with my weight, though. I grew too tall and I ate too much. And all the time I ought to have been about your size. I never could resist plum duff, I remember. With treacle. Do you like plum duff? I don't think I've ever had it. <sighs> You've been missing a great treat, you have. Well, what with one thing and another, not being able to keep my weight down, then the war coming, I had to give up all my fine plans for teaching Gordon Richards a thing or two. And here I am now. What was it you call me? Handyman spare time gardener, wasn't it? And very thankful I don't have the job too, I can tell you. Are you interested in horses, Master Paul? Paul, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Good evening, Bassett. I do hope he isn't being a nuisance. No, good evening, Miss Graham. Show him off as soon as he gets in the way. Come along, darling. You ought to have been in bed ages ago. I've been calling for you. Didn't you hear me? No, my nurse. I do hope you're going to be very comfortable here, Bassett. Are you really sure you'd rather be out here than in the house? You'll freeze, my dear man. I should be so worried about you. I'll have a fire going in just a moment, ma'am. I'll be as snug as a bug in a rug. Thanking you all the same. Well, if you're really sure you'll prefer it. Though I must say, I wouldn't care for it, would you, Paul? Yes, my man. Darling, I... bed. Good night, Bassett. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Master Paul. It was so nice that you could come to us before Christmas. You made it very cosy. I do hope you know your way to the kitchen. Good night. Come Thank on, you, Paul. Mrs. Graham. Good night. Good night, Bassett. Good night. Merry Christmas to you, children. There you are. Now, you look the most responsible member of the family. You better have that. Oh, thank you, sir. Not a bit. Good night, all of you. Good night. Good night. I like Bessie, Mummy. Dear darling, good. Richard, do shut the door. There's a terrible draft. How long have you been home? Go on, you. Oh, only about five minutes. Yeah, Where's Nanny? I gave her the afternoon off. She wanted to do some last minute shopping. She won't be back till late, so I'm having to put the children to bed. Did you have any luck? About the job. Yes and no. Oh, don't be maddening, Richard. I want to know. Who are you dressing? You could be more infuriating. Yes, of course we are. Now, this passion of yours for dressing up would be a splendid idea if only we could afford all the other things that go with it. Well, it wasn't my idea. But they'll dress. You know they will. They always do. Well, you better hurry up and put the children to bed. You haven't much time. Richard, will you tell me how things went at the office today? When you come down again? Yes. Come along, darling. It's time you were in bed. Come along, Tilda. Say your prayers. I'm just going to see my teeth, Mother. Oh, yes, sweetie. You too, Joan. Now, concentrate. 
Gentle Jesus. Gentle Jesus, make him pout. so that I can see the fire flickering in the nursery. Do you still want a nightlight, Paul? At your age? I believe it's ready because you want to see Father Christmas. Well, that's that. I must say they're no trouble. Not with me, anyway. I can't think what Nanny makes all the fuss about. What are you looking for, Paul? I want to see if Bassett's light's still on. Who's Bassett? He's a friend of mine. I was at the bank today. We're overdrawn again, badly. Well, what do they expect? It's Christmas time. Now, the manager was distinctly unpleasant. How unseasonable of him. All the same, what are we going to do? Do? Nothing. Nothing we can do. Unless, of course, you happen to get a better job. You um, haven't found insurance, have you? Or are you still not prepared to discuss it with me? Tell me, Hester. Just what difference do you think another job's going to make? More money, darling. Isn't what I'm earning enough? Not enough for both of us, no. What for the children and running this house doesn't come anywhere near it. Don't I know it? Well, I do everything I can to make it go as far as possible. But I can't work miracles. We must have more money, Richard. Somehow, we've simply got to have more money, and that's all there is to it. Richard, did you get the job? I don't know yet. I think they were favorably impressed. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Why didn't you say so? It's just going to make all the difference. Think what we can do with that extra money. We'll have the dining room done up first. I want a mass of new clothes. You want to get yourself a new overcoat. You look terrible in that awful old black thing. I suppose we really ought to get Matilda's teeth fixed now we can afford it. What is all? Now, seriously, darling, we've got a chance now. Don't let's go mad. I'm back, madam. Hello, Nanny. Did you get all your shopping done? Yes, thank you, madam. Were the children all right? Perfectly wonderful. No trouble at all. They're asleep now, quiet as mice. <laughs> I'm glad they were no bother. Good night, madam, and thank you. I can't think why you always have so much bother with them, Nanny. What have you got there? Bills, darling. Nothing but bills, bills, bills. <laughs> Are you monkeys? What's going on here? We're supposed to be in bed. Nanny, come on. You said your prayers, Jerry Tilda? Yes, Nanny. Have you really? What about you, Paul? Yes, Nanny. Have you? No. Well, off you go and do it once then, Paul. Come on, monkeys. Keep going. That's right. Ooh. Yes, you are.
Darling, it's quite worth it. Oh, 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 lovely. Oscar, how typical. Hey, Mummy, can we have the rocking horse upstairs with us now? I mean, now, right away. Darling, do stop jumping up and down. No, you can't. Bessie can bring it up to you later. Oh, Mummy, why not now? Bess is in the kitchen finishing his pudding. I know he is. I saw him. Please let me ask him. He'll do it for me. I know he will. Please, Mummy, please. Well, all right. Ask him nicely now. There was a great deal of talk about you at the club yesterday evening, Richard. It was remarked, I think I'm right in saying in your favour, that you'd been most thoroughly converted. Converted? To that modest faith which so disconcertingly insists, it is more blessed to give than to receive. How much did you lose? Oh, not a great deal. I'm delighted to hear it. Richard, you didn't... Deplorable vice gambling. Personally, I adore it. Come on, Bassett, here we are. Oh, darling, must do that now. Happy Christmas, Bassett. Thank you, ma'am. Thank Happy you, Christmas. Bassett. Happy Christmas. Thank you, Bassett. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, yes, smash the glass before. Smash it. Get him there. Can you manage by yourself? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Bring some more logs in here, Donna. That's very good, sir. Thank you. I wish I still had the energy to enjoy Christmas. Or the complacence, ever that matter. What are you talking about? It's your privilege, my dear Richard. Oh, it might have waited. Richard, what have you done? For heaven's sake, tell me what this is all about. Oh, nothing very original. I lost a lot of money playing cards. I gave a check. You'll have to be honoured the day after tomorrow. I think I told you about the bank manager. You'll remember he was unseasonable. You fool! Richard, you fool! How could you? Esther, this is not the moment for you to indulge in your undoubted talent for amateur dramatics. Relax. And you too, Richard. The cheque will be honoured. I've seen to that. And no one other than ourselves and the bank manager need know anything about it. Have you ridden him yet? Not properly, no. Well, why don't you get up on him right now? Now? Why not? Here, grab hold of these. No, 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 Master Paul, that won't do at all. You'll have to go a great deal faster than that, or you won't be in time for your own funeral. This here aren't no ordinary horse, you know. No, this here's a champion. On this one, you could ride halfway to the moon and back if you knew how. Here, let me show you the way of it. Now, first of all, you're riding too long, see? Well, take these leathers up a bit like that. That's right. Now, you put your foot in there right through the irons. That's right. When you really get the confidence of this animal, Master Paul, he'll gallop with you on his back round every race course in England. That's it, through there. That's boy. And if you speak, speak nicely to him and sort of whisper in his ear, there ain't a race he wouldn't win for you. And him only half trying. Now, gather up the reins up short, see? Get him short. That's it. Now get him collected. Just let him feel the pressure of your knees on his shoulders. You right? No, no, my dear fellow. Believe me, I don't want your thanks. I assure you the gesture was purely selfish. I'm fond of my club. Sometimes I find myself even liking the members. It would be extremely tiresome having to give it up on your account. That's right, Master Paul, that's right. Lean down now. Now get him going. That's right. Take him into the front now. That's right, now I'm coming alongside now. Look out, I'm cutting the whip. Come on, Bessie, let's take him up to the nursery. Right, here we go. Up the stable, will you? But of course, naturally, Oscar. All the same, Richard, don't make any mistake. I'm not a philanthropist, and I expect to be repaid. But how, Richard, how? Whatever made you do such a thing? You. You did. I? Now, what on earth does he mean by that? Ever since we were married, we've lived above our incomes. Because of you, we've lived like millionaires. Anything you've wanted, we've had. A holiday abroad, a new dress. Or well, taking this house from us, doing it up and furnishing it. Even during now, the war, you me, had... Richard. I don't propose in front of my own brother to be made the scapegoat of your idiotic behaviour. There are money difficulties, I know. 
That's no excuse for you to behave as if we were responsible for the national debt. However extravagant I may or may not have been, that doesn't make me in any way responsible for your card debts or for the beastly way in which you try to settle them. Oh, Hester. And I can tell you this, Richard. I'm simply not going to give up everything I love, everything I believe in, all the things I could never do without. Oh, that's all very well, but can we afford it? Can we? Somehow, yes. There must be some more money somewhere. There must be indeed, but where? For instance, there's the children's education to worry about. Richard has a new job. Not yet. Ask her to put in a good word for you. Whether I do or not is beside the point. All this hysteria, however enjoyable, my dear Hester, is a waste of energy and positively exhausting. Particularly since you've been exciting yourself over comparative trivialities. Trivialities? Richard's problem is solved. It had to be. I will also undertake to help him to get this new appointment. But I'm warning you, both of you, of the seriousness of your position. If you persist in gambling, Richard, it's only a question of time before you're a ruined man. I've been very unlucky, Oscar. It's not a question of luck, my dear fellow. You're a bad card player, and that's all there is to it. As for you, Hester, you, my dear, are shamelessly extravagant and proud of it. I'm speaking now not as your brother, but as your trustee. If you do not make a determined effort to live, not within your income, that would be asking too much, but at least within calling distance of it, the idea of giving up everything you love may only too easily become a reality. Nonsense, Oscar, you exaggerate. I seldom do. I refuse to be frightened by you, Oscar. We simply must have more money, and that's all there is to it. Under the trust, you've had every available penny. But that's absurd. We can't go on like this forever. We must have more money. Not from me, Hester. Not from me. It's immaterial where it comes from. We need it, Oscar. We have to have it, and sooner or later, we must get it. We must have more money. That's all there is to it. There must be more money. <laughs> envelope. This one? Oh, very. Yes. I expect Mother will be awfully pleased to get it, won't she? Well, that's very difficult to say. She may, of course. And then again, she may not. She burns most of her letters. It won't do her any good to burn this one. Is it special? I'll say it is. Very extra super special, that's what I call it. Mrs. Richard Graham? Yes? I'm from Park and Duffy. Here's a writ. Good day to you, madam. I suppose we won't be going for a walk now, will we? Why not? Don't be so lazy. Of course we're going for a walk. Do us good. Come on. We'll go out this way, shall we? Good afternoon, Mrs. Graham. Good afternoon. Mother, why don't we keep a car of our own? Why do we always have to use uncles, or else a taxi? Because we are the poor members of the family. But why are we, Mother? Well, I suppose it's because your father has no luck. Is luck money, Mother? No, Paul, not quite. It's what causes you to have money. Oh. If you're lucky, you have money. That's why it's better to be born lucky than rich. If you're rich, you can always lose your money. But if you're lucky, you'll always get more money. Oh, will? Isn't father lucky? Very unlucky, I should say. Why? Well, I don't know, Paul. No one ever knows why one person's lucky and another unlucky. Don't they? Nobody at all. Aren't you lucky either, Mummy? 
I used to think I was before I was married. Now I think I'm very unlucky indeed. Why? Never mind, perhaps I'm not really. Anyhow, I'm lucky. Are you? I can prove it. Can you, darling? If you're lucky, you keep on getting more money, don't you? I suppose so. That's what you said. And I've got money in my money box. Lots of it. And I keep on getting it. So I must be lucky, mustn't I? I'll give it to you if you like, Mummy. All of it. You can have it all. You need it, don't you, Mother? Tell me, how much have you got in your money box? Lots of it. Yes, but how much? Over a pound. Twenty-two and seven months last time I counted. And you really give all that to me? Yes, yes, of course. Listen, darling. That's very, very sweet of you. But I don't need any money so badly that I'd take it away from you. I'd never, never do that, however badly I needed it. So just you forget all about it and go on putting your pennies in your money box until you have hundreds and hundreds of pounds put away. Would I be a millionaire then? No, not quite. I can't imagine hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Perhaps that's just as well. Good afternoon, Bessie. Afternoon, sir. Anyone at home? No, sir. Mrs. Graham's taking Master Paul out for a walk. They all will be back any moment now. Good. If it's any interest to you, Bessie, Brown Jug won the 230. Ahead from Solitaire. And the favourite, sir? Nowhere. Would you believe it now? Just my luck. And mine. And yet, you know, Bassett, there must be some way of beating the book. Sort of uh, infallible system, sir. Something like that. Well, sir, I never yet heard of a horse that was a certainty that didn't finish so far down the course he was all set to win the race coming up behind him. <laughs> Mugs, that's what we are, Bassett. Mugs. I've no patience with us. You know something, sir? Neither have I. Darling, you're back early, aren't you? Yes, I wasn't feeling so good. Hello, Paul. Enjoy your walk. Yes, thanks, Father. Look, there's Uncle Oscar. Hello, Uncle Oscar. Have you come to tea? Hello, young Paul. I brought you a present. Here you are. Thanks awfully. What a wizard whip. It's exactly what I wanted, Uncle Oscar. Be careful, young fellow. You'll have the head off every fly in the garden. Oscar, darling, how terribly sweet of you. He's been asking for something like that for ages. How are you? I've been waiting for you, Hester. Ah, Richard, no work today? No, no work today. Nor tomorrow, either. <laughs> Must have a master lot of worries to be looking like that, Master Paul. What's the trouble? Oh, nothing. What you reading? I'm trying to make my fortune. And if I can find the winner of the four o'clock race at Doncaster this afternoon, I'll be well on my way towards doing of it. You know, I've got a fancy for overseer. But this here safety pin might be a bit of a danger. What do you think about it? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Well, have a guess, then. You never know, you might be lucky. Oh, I am lucky. I know I am. I think you are all right. Good old boy. All right, what is it to be? Overseer or safety pin? Don't say anything. I'm magicking it. Safety pin. Safety pin it is, then. Now, I'll just uh, pop down the road and, and put my money on. I, I won't be gone long. That's it. Yes, Master Paul? Lend me five shillings. No, what do you want five shillings for? I'll give it you back next time I open my money box. Honestly, I will. Will you? 
Well, I might, if, if you don't mind telling me... Put it on safety pin for me, will you? Will you, Bassett? Now, look here, Master Paul. I want to put it on like you do. I know I'm lucky, and I want to prove it. Please, please. All right, then. Mind you, only this once now. There can't be any harm in it, just this once. But you're not to tell a single soul now, do you understand that? See, that's wet. See, that's dry. Cross my heart if I tell a lie. See, that's wet. See, that's dry. Cross my heart if I tell a lie. Five bob it is, then, on safety pin. To win? To win. Good old boy. Ritz Hester, Ritz. How do you propose to pay them? A lost job, Richard. How are you going to get another? I lied vilely to get you that one. And now, heaven help us, comes this appalling news from old Webb. Make no mistake, Hester, I've checked on it. And let me tell you this. You've made such an incredible muddle between the two of you, it'll be a miracle, in my opinion, if the estate isn't declared bankrupt. Bankruptcy. You have children, Hester, and something must be done at once, if only for them. Well, there it is. A fact. Now, we only need to know one thing. Just what exactly are you going to do about it? Just what exactly are you going to do? Thank you, Oscar. There's so much to thank you for, isn't there? Richard's done his best, but what can I do? Who does one thank an elder brother for being brotherly? Or a trustee for being a trustee? After all, you've loaned us nothing more than we must have. Should we, for instance, thank you for making conditions, Oscar? We'll do what you say, because we must. We'll cut down, we'll scrimp and save and live carefully and do all the ghastly, boring, improper things you say we must. But I don't honestly think we can thank you for it. But I'll tell you one thing we can thank you for. Your unbearable superiority. Believe me, darling, that made the necessity of begging from you infinitely easier. You see, Oscar, there's so much to thank you for. I don't pay any attention to her, Oscar. She doesn't really mean that. Of course she means it, my dear fellow. I'm delighted she does. She ought to. I would. Oh, go away, Oscar. Good night, Hester. And remember, this is the last time I'll ever lend you money. I mean that. You'd better make the most of it. Never, never again. You can stop looking upon me as your private bank. After this, there are no more funds. You'd better go to work, my dear. You may at least do a little better than Richard. What do you suggest I do? Heaven knows. You have a runaway talent for spending money, that's about all. But there must be something you can do. Goodbye, Oscar, and thanks again. Thanks most awfully. Safety pin. Well, what do you expect? That's a stupid kind of a name for a horse, anyhow. Now, let this be a lesson to you, Master Paul. You keep away from the horses. And you've got every chance of growing up to be a happy man. I lost the five shillings, didn't I, Bassett? That's right. Uncle Oscar, can you lend me some money? Lend you some... What in the world do you want with money? I'd rather not say. And supposing I'd rather not lend? It's a secret. Sort of because you're lucky, Uncle Oscar. Mm. Something tells me your mother put that idea into your head. But it isn't true, Paul. You can take it from me. Mama, here you are. Don't spend it all at once. Thanks, Uncle Oscar. I do think you're lucky all the same. <laughs> Good night, Paul. Good night, Bessie. Good night, sir. Is this all for me, then? No. Well, what might you do with it, then, Master Paul? Back another loser for you? But we might get a winner this time, Bassett. Oh, no, you don't. Remember what I told you. Just the once, that's all. But Uncle Oscar's lucky, Bassett. I know he is. You will back it for me. I want you to. Oh, I will, will I? And if that's not asking you too much, Master Paul, what'll I back it on? I don't know yet. Good night, Bassett. If I could just have a word with you, madam. Well, what is it, Nanny? Well, it's all right. What is it? Good evening, sir. Good evening, Nanny. 
Well, it's Master Paul, madam. I don't know what to make of him these days. Nanny? Whatever do you mean? Well, carrying on something terrible. He is frightening his sisters to death. But how, Nanny? Well, sir, it's the rocking horse, really. He's always on it. Well, that's not very frightening. Well, no, madam. But it's the way he rides it, in a sort of frenzy. You ought to see him. Very unnatural, I call it. Sort of unhealthy, sir. <laughs> I don't like it, madam. He's getting beyond me. I don't know what to do with him. I don't really. All right, Nanny, I'll come up. Coming, Oscar? Yes, I'd like to. It sounds a fascinating experience. It's no laughing matter, so believe me. Just you wait and see. right, Paul. Never stop till you get there. You're up much too late. What's his name? He hasn't got a name. That's all right with that one, I suppose. Well, he's got different names. Last week, he was called Sandorino. Sandorino? Why not ask him? How did you know? He's always talking about racing with Bassett. Bassett should have told me. Come along, darling. Oh, yeah. what a shame. That promised to be the most adult and enjoyable conversation I've had for a long time. Good night, old man. Good night, darling. I shouldn't ride that silly old horse quite so much if I were you. It worries Nanny dreadfully and frightens Joan and Tilda. Good night, Uncle Oscar. Good night, Mummy. For heaven's sake, don't encourage him, Oscar. Nanny's quite right. He's getting awfully difficult. Oh, he's all right. He's a nice boy. Fancy him knowing about Sandorino. He's such a funny boy, Oscar. I don't seem to be able to get anywhere near him. Did you see him on that horse? Well, I'm not surprised that Nanny's upset. There's no good getting cross with him. Isn't it time he was out of the nursery world? Why not give him a room of his own? It might do the trick, you never know. Are you encouraging me to spend money, Oscar? You don't need any encouragement. As a matter of fact, my dear girl, it needn't cost you a penny if you go the right way about it. A room of his own? He could have the old box room. It's rather attractive up there, I think about it. Since I'm staying the night in any case, how would you like it if I took him out with me into the country tomorrow? It'll do him good. He probably needs a change. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, would you, Oscar? You see, I've got to be away from home all day anyway. It's my committee meeting for the charity board. Well, you see, sir, he comes and asks me, and I can't very well do less than tell him, can I, sir? Has he ever asked you to put money on a horse, Bassett? Well, I wouldn't like to give him away, sir. He's a good sport, and I think he gets a lot of fun out of it. I'd rather you asked him yourself, sir, if you don't mind. All ready, Uncle Oscar. Ah, there you are. That's right. Show it in the back. Jump in. It's a perfectly lovely day. We mustn't miss a minute of it. Uncle Oscar. I just get the winner. Oh, do you? I suppose you haven't by any chance got a winner for this afternoon. Goodwood. Honour bright. Honour bright. Well then. 
Davido. Nothing much known about it. Uncle, mm -hmm. you won't let it go any further, will you? I promise, Bassett. What's Bassett got to do with it? We're partners. I promised him on a ride. It was only between me and him. You won't let it go any further, will you? Don't you worry. I'll keep it to myself. Daffodil. How much is Bassett putting on? All except 20 pounds. Bassett says we ought to keep that in what he calls reserve. 20 pounds in reserve? Just how much is he bidding? 300, Uncle. It's between you and me, isn't it? All right. <laughs> oh, it's between you and me, all right. Don't you worry about that. But just where is this 300? Bassett keeps it. I told you, we're partners. 300? Pounds or pennies? Pounds, I think. Paul, I've got an idea. Goodwood's only 40 minutes away. How would you like to go racing this afternoon and see the real thing? All right, Uncle Oscar. I've never been racing before. I say. Well, come on then. Let's see what you make of it. What exactly does this mean? What do you want? Forty pounds, lady. You've had a judgment entered against you for this. Pretty, isn't it? Don't be impertinent. Leave this house at once. Now, come off it, lady. I'm in possession. I don't understand what this means. How dare you? Now, don't get tough, lady. It only makes it more difficult for the both of us. Will you leave this house or shall I send for the police? Now, stop acting silly, lady. It's a waste of time. You know I'm a bailiff. I know I'm a bailiff. Here's the order for possession. Now, how about the 40 quid? A bailiff? That's right. Funny men in the pantomime, you know. And we ain't so funny. For the last time, will you go away? No, lady, I won't. Not without the 40 quid. I'll write your check. No good. Cash or nothing. That's the way it is. You don't expect me to keep as much as 40 pounds in the house, do you? I don't expect anything, lady. I just stay put till I get the money. You stay here? That's right. All the time? Day and night. Night and day. Makes you think it's cold porter, doesn't it? But it's absurd. I, I haven't got enough time to get to the bank before it closes. Can't your husband get the money and bring it home with him? No, he cannot. You realize I have an engagement this afternoon and the people are coming to dinner here this evening, important people? All right, lady. I'll keep out of the way. I won't disgrace you. You don't mind my asking, lady. But you haven't hope of getting this money, have you? Not at the moment, I mean, right away. Well, I only asked. I wanted to have some idea of how long I might be staying. How long would you say? A couple of days? A week? Ten days, maybe. You'll be out of this house by this evening. Not without the money, lady. You'll have every filthy penny. Best to get me a taxi at once, will you? I'm in a great hurry. And tell Cook I'll have to borrow her housekeeping money, if she's got any left.
Now, let's see what you got here. Mr. Saldoes, I was given your name. Never mind that. How much do you want for it? Well, I'd rather hope that you'd make... Make an offer? An offer? Twenty quid the lot. Twenty pounds? But, Mr. Saldouris, do you realise this dress alone cost me a hundred pounds? I do. Twenty quid. But it's ridiculous. These shoes cost me twenty pounds. These things must be worth more than that. They are, to me. Twenty quid on Merson for myself, and I'll put something on for you on anything you like. Now, what do you fancy? Daffodil, Uncle. Oh, no, not daffodil. But that's the winner, Uncle. <laughs> All right, daffodil it shall be. For both of us. Come along. Oh, you ask me to make you enough? I uh have. -huh. What's your proposition? Well, I thought... Fifty pounds be too much? Are you joking? It's just that I think... Thirty pounds. That's the best I can do. No, they're worth far more than that. I won't sell them for thirty pounds. You're trying to cheat me. Naturally. How much you got to have? I know you want the money quick. That's why you'll come to me. And you want cash, don't you? No check. Cash. Today. How much? Forty pounds. Throw in the fancy case and I give you 40. No! The case is worth far, far more than that. Besides, it was given to me. I'm very fond of it. Good day, lady, good day. All right, Mr. Saldouris. 40 pounds for the lot. Well, girl, I'll get the money. I trust you. Thank you. To now. I've changed my mind, driver. It's such a lovely day, I'm going to walk. You're going to what? I'm going to walk, driver. Thank you. Here, lady, ain't you forgotten something? You was too generous. I couldn't take all this money from you, really, I couldn't.
Now, what am I to do with these? Well, Blessed always keeps them, Uncle. We're collecting them for Mother. Paul, you're not really serious about Bassett and all this money, are you? Yes, I am. But it's between you and me, Uncle, isn't it? I mean, on the bright. Oh, it's on the bright, all right. I think I'll have a word with Bassett. Tell me, Bassett, what's all this nonsense about you and young Paul having a bet on the horses? Begging your pardon, sir, I aren't just exactly clear what Master Paul's been saying. Well, he says you're partners or something, that you've been making a packet of money. Is it true? Well, sir... Is it true, Bassett? Well, it's like this here, sir. You see, Master Paul would get me talking about racing events. Spinning yarns, you know, sir. He was always keen on knowing if I'd made a bit or if I'd lost. Well, that's about 18 months ago now, since I put me five bob on safety pin for him and that lost. Then the luck turned. With that ten shillings he got from you. We put that on Singalese. Well, ever since then, that's been pretty steady, all things considering. How steady? Well, pretty steady. You see, that's all right when we're sure. That's when we aren't sure we go down. Yes. That's all very fine. But when are you sure? That's Master Paul, sir. That's just as if he had it from heaven. Like Daffodil today at Goodwood. That was as sure as eggs. Did you have anything on Daffodil? Yes, sir. How much? I did all right, sir. And my nephew? I did all right for him too, sir. Yes, but how much, Bassett? Twelve hundred pounds, sir. Twelve hundred pounds? That's right. Twelve hundred pounds. Paul! Paul, come here a minute, will you? All right, Bassett. Where's the money? Well, that's safe enough, sir. I keep it locked up where no one can get at it. Master Paul can have it any time he like to ask for it. I don't believe it. Well, that's all right with Master Paul, so you can see it if you like. I'll show it to you. I still don't understand. When exactly are you sure? Well, sometimes I'm absolutely sure. Like about Daffodil. When you're sure, like about Daffodil? What makes you so sure, Paul? Well, I... don't exactly know, Uncle. I'm just sure. That's just like he had it from heaven, sir. Yes, I should just about think it was. Do you still want me for a partner? Oh, yes, Uncle Oscar. Don't we, Bassett? You're lucky and you'll bring us lots more luck. I know you will. Well, I, I seem to be getting the rest of the bargain. Ought you to put some of that money in a bank? Oh, he suggested that in the master portal, but... Well, we're a bit superstitious like the two of us. We'd rather not break the luck, if you don't mind. I suppose you know best, but still. Well, good night to you both. I must go. I'm late. We'll have another talk, eh, later in the week. Good night, Uncle Oscar. And thanks all for a wonderful day. Oh, and I say, you won't tell anybody about our partnership, will you? It's a secret between the three of us, isn't it? On the bright, Uncle Oscar. We're partners, aren't we? Then we must shake hands on it. I won't tell a soul, on a bright. But next time you're sure, don't forget I want to hear about it, will you? Good night, Bassett. Good night, sir. Darling, I thought I probably missed you. Did you have a lovely day? How was Paul? Curious things just happened to me, Hester. I wonder if you'd understand. Have you ever been told something fantastic, something impossible, something that just couldn't happen, and yet seen the evidence of it, held it in your hand? As if, for instance, Nanny told the children a fairy tale, 
and suddenly was able to produce a leprechaun out of her apron and put it on the table in front of them. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. Nothing of any importance. Must you rush off like this? Yes, I must. I'm late as it is. What do you haven't told me about Paul? Did he enjoy himself? Was he sick or anything? Paul? Oh, yes, he's all right. We had a splendid day together. Here's your money. Thanks, lady. Been having to sleep. Hope you don't mind. Tired of work hours. Forty pounds correct. Hurry up and go away. You uh, want your discharge paper, don't you, lady? Oh, uh... By the way, there's just one other little matter. Nothing to worry about, of course. An extra seven and six. Seven and sixpence? What for? My services. I don't do this for nothing, you know. Do you mean to say... Do you have the nerve to stand there and tell me? This lady, I do, most decidedly. Seven and six a day we get. No seven and six. No discharge paper. But I haven't any more money with me. Oh, that's a pity. Your mother come up and say goodnight to you later. She's busy just now. Mummy, it won't take a minute. I only want to tell her about Goodwood. Hello, Mummy. Nanny, have you any money on you? I've run out of change. Who is that you're talking to? Oh, please be quiet, Paul. I'm too busy. Do you want some money? I've got some. I'll be quiet, Paul. I'm too tired. I don't know, madam. I don't think so. I've got some upstairs in my purse that I do know. Oh, listen, Mummy, I have. Lots and lots of it. You can have as much Paul, as you Paul, will you be quiet? I simply haven't got the time or the patience to play silly games with you. Now, stop it. Here we are. What a bit of luck, madam. Three half crowns. And remember now, cook owed them to me for the sweepstake money. Thank you, Nanny. You're an angel. mean it all. She was too busy. I told you, remember? I told you she was too busy to play. But I wasn't playing, Nanny. I wasn't playing. Thank you. Good day, lady. No offence meant. None taken, I hope. Good luck. Poor misguided ass, that's what I am. Lively Spark has got about as much chance of winning the ledger as a cart horse. Not as much chance. This is probably one of the most costly and whimsical wages ever known. Lively Spark. <laughs> no one's ever heard of the animal. But I'm sure it'll win, Uncle. I don't care how sure you are. Do you realize, young fellow, at this very minute a considerable sum of money is going west? I must have been out of my mind. A thousand pounds, Paul. A thousand pounds. Why, you don't even know the meaning of... Fortunately, we are at least spared the agony of seeing the disaster. Don't worry, Uncle. Lovely Spark will win. I'm sure of it. They're well into the straight, and it's still Listen. Open. Two furlongs to go, and Penny Leaf takes the lead. Blue Pepper's well there, so a falling flower. Great Bridge and Mascot. Now Blue Pepper's gone to the front, and Penny Leaf's under the whip. And so's Great Bridge. And here's one coming right on the outside. It's Lively Spark making a late run. A hundred yards to go, and it's Penny Leaf and Blue Pepper locked together, and Lively Spark catching them. Fifty yards, and they're neck and neck to three of them. It may be a photograph finish. No, at the post, it's Penny Leaf. Well, that was our most exciting race. And the numbers have gone up, and Lively Spark has definitely won. You've done it. You've done it. Lively Spark it was at ten to one. Yes, Uncle. You see, I was absolutely sure of him. Paul, I don't think you realise. You won ten thousand pounds. Have I, Uncle? Is that a lot? Oh, it's enough. I wish I knew how you did it. It's a secret. What are you going to do with all that money? Well, I started it for Mother. She said she had no luck because Father was unlucky. And I thought if I were lucky, it might stop whispering. What might stop whispering? Our house. I hate our house for whispering. What does it whisper? Well, uh, it's always short of money, you know, Uncle. 
and then it whispers like people laughing at you behind your back. It's awful, that is. And I thought if I were lucky... You might be able to stop it. Well, what are we going to do about it? I shouldn't like Mother to know I was lucky. Why not? She'd stop me. I don't think she would. Oh, I don't want her to know. All right, Paul. We must try and help her without her knowing. It ought to be easy enough. I tell you what. I'll get 5,000 pounds from Bassett and hand it over to old Webb. Who's he? Your mother's lawyer. I'll get him to write to her and let her know that a... or that a distant relative or someone has left her 5,000 pounds to be paid annually on her birthday. A thousand a time. Well, that's a good idea. I don't suppose she'll believe it for a moment. But if I know your mother, she won't ask too many questions as long as she gets a thousand pounds every November. November the 12th. Mm. Quite a birthday present. I trust it won't make it all the harder for her later. I hope it makes her happy, Uncle. Just lately, the house has been whispering worse than ever. Is he? He'll be here, sir. Any moment now. I hope he brings it off this time. The derby's only a week off, you know. But it may have escaped your notice, my dear Bassett. We need a winner. A winner, sir? We need a flock of them. <laughs> it's very serious, Bassett. Very serious indeed. We've been losing steadily since last November. And it can't go on. I wonder what makes him sure. I must know for the derby. I must know the winner. I must be sure. Oh, I wish I was sure. Well, how about it, Paul? Now, listen to me. You'd better give it a rest. Even though we've been losing steadily throughout the season, there's still a bit left of the kitty. I suggest we lay off for a month or two until Paul's absolutely sure again. Don't let it worry you. There's nothing to worry about. Is there, Bassett? No, no, nothing at all. But you don't understand. I've got to know. I've got to be sure. Something terrible will happen if I'm not. I know it will. What do you mean, Paul? Something terrible? It's the house, Uncle. It's not getting any better. Like we thought it would. It's getting worse. Whispering again, eh? Yes, Uncle. I must stop it whispering. I want to make Mother happy, and I can't if it goes on whispering, now can I? Don't worry, Uncle. Everything will be all right. I'm bound to know in time for the derby. I am, really. Then everything will be all right. I know it will. You'll see. Let him go, Bassett. That bad? That's not for me to say, sir. Don't be a fool, Bassett, is it? Well, sir, to tell you the truth, just lately I've been getting master worried about the whole affair. The boy's not himself. That's just like something we're driving him to find a winner. He... he don't enjoy it no more. He don't get no fun out of it like when we started. No. No, the little fellow's not happy. I don't like the sound of it, Bassett. I don't like the sound of it at all. No, sir. Nor don't I. I'm thinking that's an unhappy kind of a house for him to be in just now. Oh, 
Oh, there you are, madam, at last. I've been telephoning all over London for you. Why, Nanny, what's the matter? It's Master Paul, madam. What's he done now? Well, he hasn't done nothing, madam. He's ill. I've got him in bed. Ill? What's the matter with him? Well, not exactly ill, no. There's nothing really to worry about. He was taken poorly during the afternoon, just before tea. I've had the doctor. Well, what does he say? Well, he couldn't make him out, really. He said he needed absolute rest and quiet. That there wasn't anything organically wrong, as you might say. He hasn't got a temperature or anything like that. I'll telephone him when I've seen Paul. I shouldn't disturb him, madam. He's asleep now. The doctor gave him a draft just before he left. Well, perhaps you're right, Mary. What exactly did the doctor say? Well, he couldn't say for sure, madam. He mentioned something about his nerves. But said there was nothing to worry about so long as we kept him quiet and didn't get him overexcited. He was very insistent on that. Don't get him upset, he said. Hello? Dr. Nichols? This is Mrs. Graham. Yes, it's about Paul. Mm-hmm. Then you don't think there's anything immediate to worry about? Yes, I see. His brain? But I don't understand. I see. Yes, of course we won't upset him. What an extremely... Yes, I understand. I must say, I thought he seemed much better these last two days. He's certainly much calmer, but he still looks awfully peaky. You ready? Yes. I say, you look magnificent, seems to be the only word. And a very nice word, too. I'm just going up to say goodnight to Paul. Shop him more than a couple of minutes. Well, don't be long. Of all nights, you don't want to be late tonight. You are a naughty boy. You would have been asleep ages ago. Oh, but you promised, Mother. What did I promise? You promised you'd come and show myself all dressed up. Did I? Well, now that you see me, what do you think of me? I think you look wonderful, Mummy. Well, that's more than can be said for you. Are you feeling all right? Yes, thanks, Mummy. Dr. Nichols says I'm much better. He says I'm getting better every day. Yes, I know. Paul, how would you like to go away? For a holiday, I mean. But I can't. I've been thinking, instead of waiting for Nanny and the others, wouldn't you like to go down to the seaside now? I can't possibly go before the Derby, Mummy. Not possibly. Why not? You can go down tomorrow morning and still go to the Derby with Uncle Oscar in the afternoon from the seaside. Besides, all this horse racing isn't good for you. You get far too excited. You're all nerves. Far better to go to the seaside and forget all about it. I've got to go now, my darling. Good night. Please, Mummy. I'll do whatever you like, Mummy. As long as you don't send me away till after the Derby. Send you away? From this house, do you mean? Yes. You are a curious child. What makes you care about this house so much suddenly? Please, Mummy, don't make me go away till after Derby. Please, Mummy, please. Darling, darling, all right. Don't get so excited. You don't have to go to the seaside till after Derby if you don't want to. Only you must promise me that you won't let yourself get so upset. And you won't think so much about horse racing either, will you? No, I won't think much about that, Mother. You needn't worry. Good night, darling. Now put off the light and go to sleep. Mummy, I wouldn't worry if I were you. If you were me and I were you. I wonder what we should do. But I don't want you to worry, because you needn't. You do know that, don't you? You ought to. Ought I? Then I'll see about it. I'll go to sleep. Esther, it's after nine. We'll be late. Don't make so much noise. He's just getting off to sleep. He's such a strange boy. He still gets so easily upset. Oh, he ought to be at school. That's all that's the matter with him. Don't fuss, darling. Richard, do you think everything's going to be all right? Well, of course, darling. He'll be all right in a week or so. No, I mean tonight. Oh, tonight. I'm sure it'll be a great success. Evening, Matthew. Evening, ma'am. Hello, Matthew. Evening, sir. Like old times. Plan to have some tomorrow? No, worse luck. I had a bit of a tip given to me yesterday by my governor. Say, so I it. I can't see him coming nowhere near the favourite myself. And a favourite don't stand a chance. 
Old Gordon's going to win this. He'll walk it. And if he don't, I've got my eye on a nice little outsider. Malabar. Malabar. So I asked you to run rings round him. Well, I don't believe myself any outsider's going to win this race. There's over half a dozen of them to choose from. Not one of them a darn bit of good. Breeden, Penny Plain, Crackerjack, Syosset, and Malabar. No, no, the favourite will win this one. There's nothing to beat it. Thank Thanks. <laughs> children all right? And Paul? Is he all right? As far as I know, madam. Shall I run upstairs and have a look at him? No, 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 don't bother. It's all right. Go back to bed. Sorry to have disturbed you. 
We'll be home fairly soon. Good night. Good night, madam. Mm. After four. I'm expecting him now. What does he mean by Malabar? It's a horse running in the derby. He kept repeating it all night long. I'm calling for Bassett. His eyes were like blue stones. He tried to get up once. I think he had some idea of. Here's the doctor now. That's it. Come here a minute, will you? How's the little fella getting on, sir? He's still unconscious. It's Malabar. Mm. Malabar? Apparently he's been repeating it all night. He was calling for you, too. What are you going to do? I'm going to do what he told me. He'd want me to do that. I know it.
Hello. Is that Ladbrokes? This is Mr. Cresswell speaking. Norm de Plume Clubman. I want £250 to win Malabar. Yes, that's right. Malabar to win. did as you told me. We made over 70,000 pounds. Now we got over 80,000 altogether. Malabar came in all right, Master Paul. He was a good old boy. I never told you, Mummy. If I can ride my horse and get there, then I'm absolutely sure. Oh, absolutely. Mummy, did I ever tell you? I am lucky. What the devil's that noise? It's Bassett. I told him to get rid of that rocking horse. I told him to get it out of the house. My God, Hester. Your eighty odd thousand pounds to the good, and a poor devil of a son to the bad. But poor devil, poor devil. He's best gone out of a life where he has to ride a rocking horse to find a winner.
was just going to bring it into you, ma'am. Bring what in, Bassett? The money, ma'am. That's in this here box. We used to... No, Bassett, don't give it to me. Don't bring it anywhere near me. I won't have anything to do with it. But that's yours, ma'am. He wanted you to have it. That'd make you happy, he said. Bassett. Please. Then what... What am I going to do with it, Mrs. Graham? Burn it. Burn it, Bassett, too. With the rocking horse. Can't do it, I say. Master Paul wouldn't have wanted me to do this. He wouldn't have liked it at all. There's something that will be done with it. Mrs. Graham, I'm a poor man. I've been brought up amongst poor people. I can't bring myself to burn good money. How can you call it that? Good money. It's blood money, dreadful, evil money. How could anybody ever touch money like that? Go on, Bassett, burn it. No. No, I'm, I'm thinking I'll take it to your lawyer. Mr. Webb. Mr. Russell Webb, isn't it? He'll probably know what to do. There must be some use for it. Might be able to save a few lives with it. Cost one to get it. Mrs. Graham, you came out here to say something to me, isn't that right? Wanted to see the end of it. Just wanted to be sure it had gone. Gone for good. You won't never see the end of it, ma'am. Nor won't I. As long as ever we'll live, we'll remember. And we'll know. Just what it is was done. <laughs> <laughs>